This is free game. They're giving out free game. It's free game. What's up, y'all? We back with more free game. Another episode about major decisions. I'm joined with my friend Josh today. What's up, Josh? What's good, bro? What's good? It's GP. Hopefully, y'all met me by now. It's not. If not, it's your first episode. Welcome to free game. Today we're talking about Josh's major. Josh is a Texas Tech senior along with me here. Here, I'm a business major. What's your major, Josh? I'm a math major. A math major, interesting. So it's kind of, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Like mm -hmm. all your classes, I'm guessing you take a lot of, you take a lot of math, but. Only math. <laughs> <laughs> literally only math. Literally only math, yeah. but like, okay, so I guess we know about math and all that, but give me your most difficult class you've taken so far in math. Um, my most difficult class is is multiple classes, mm -hmm. but the most difficult type of class is uh, theory based classes. Like I can say, for most people, you don't deal too much with theory. So applied things like applied math mm -hmm. is is you know pretty normal, or in some cases to me like more easy. Mm -hmm. But when you have to deal with the so theory, what do you mean like when you say applied math? Like explain to them kind of like what you mean by that. Okay, so me basically asking you a question, saying okay, so. If, if somebody throws a ball at this speed, mm -hmm. how far is it going to land? So that's applying math to, okay. you know, something. That makes sense. But when you deal with no numbers and it's only variables and you have to prove those variables by going through these steps and, you know, just showing that it can only be this answer, mm -hmm. that's where it starts to get really difficult, at least for me. Or that's when it starts to, you know, become a little abstract. So yeah, I've taken some abstract classes and some, <laughs> some theory-based classes, and to me, those are the most difficult. But I actually kind of enjoy the understanding the concept. I don't like doing the proofs for to, you know, to get the, right. the answers. It's like the one concept. of those necessary evils kind of that exactly. you have to do in your major. Exactly. I got the concepts you. are pretty cool. Yeah, we all have those. So when you came into college, did you did you want to be a math major? 17, 18, did you come into Texas Tech, like, nah. entering into math? No, actually, coming into Texas Tech, I was an engineering major. I wanted to do engineering, and I was going to minor in math. But, you know, things happen, you know, grades, I slip up a little bit. So I ended up switching my major to math, and I'm doing a minor in engineering. Okay. But what type of engineering? Mechanical. Mechanical? Okay. So, and that's what I started out as, a mechanical engineering major. Okay. But one thing that I did like a lot was math. As an engineering major, you know, most STEM majors, you have to have a pretty good grounding in math, and I would say like it. So it wasn't a big deal, actually, like, that was my next option, go, leaving engineering. Like, mm -hmm. I, I had a few options, you know, physics, or I could have went into a little bit more, uh, really, physics was the only other option, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. But, uh, it was, yeah, I thought physics and math, and I like both of them, but yeah. math, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at it, and I enjoy doing it. So, yeah, I went, I went ahead and did math. But uh, yeah. So if you go back, would you would you become a math major again? Like, would you make that decision again? Um, I guess low key with the things that I know now, I feel like I understand uh, how math can be applied to more to more job markets. Mm -hmm. So I would I I'll probably I would probably do a double major. Okay. Probably a double major in engineering and math. Mm -hmm. Or if I did do math, I would probably do a double major in something like computer science or okay. like something like computer science. A skill that's like easily applicable easily, to like the job exactly, market. Exactly, because it's, it's a lot easier to get a job if you have a, you know, a, a distinct second application to that math. That know? makes sense, that makes sense. So um, what type of jobs do you get into or does the average math major, I guess, get into like after they graduate? Okay, so with just a math major, a lot of people know this, you could be a teacher. But um, I would say if you if you if you kind of have a good idea of where you want to go, that 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 minor or that double major that you do can get mm -hmm. you into a lot of different things like data analytics. We were talking about this the other day, yeah. like market analytics. So uh -huh. you know you can do analytics, actuary, uh, where you're basically you're just trying to like figure out the route a business can go. Like okay. you, you know you you interpret the data and you relay that to the the business side or whatever. Whatever company it is that you're working for, you're the one breaking the numbers down and putting that in plain words for them. But if, so you would suggest to like a high school kid or a freshman, sophomore in college that if they're looking at becoming a math major to couple that with something, oh, yeah, like 100%. get a minor, get a double major, something like that, 100%. don't just major in math. Unless you want to be a teacher. Unless you want to be a teacher, exactly. okay. So okay. If you, yeah, if you if you like math and you have some other interest, find mm -hmm. a way to couple that because the opportunities are there. 
Like they're math majors or, or, or people that are, have a good specialty or a specific specialty in math, yeah. there's a lot of room for those people in companies. So that's a really good tip for you guys. So if you really do like math and you might not necessarily want to be an engineer, you even do want to be an engineer, get those base math skills and get those in college, but also couple that with maybe something like MIS to where you can become a computer science person, exactly. some type of economics major maybe exactly. to where you're good at data analytics, things like that. So you guys, like when you're doing your research into becoming a math major perhaps, find out what else you couple that in. Find out what else you'd be good at to where your job market would be even like more open to you because for like these data analytics jobs, like we talked about it a little bit like the other day, but what would you say like the starting range income would be like for like people coming out of college? For something like analytics or actuarial sciences, you can see your salary starting anywhere between, depending on the company, eighty thousand to one hundred and twenty thousand mm -hmm. a year. Like starting out, that's like, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty wild. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of yeah. people just assume like you you could just be a teacher or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And shoot, even being a teacher, you might have to go through a little bit more schooling. Yeah. And you want to be a professor, you can see upwards of that. Exactly. You know? Those those professors in the business college at Texas Tech are making mid hundred thousands to start off so yeah. so yeah it's a it's a it's a pretty good market out there you just gotta like we said earlier couple it with something you don't yeah. just have just a base math degree but you would say like i would say personally that there's just few people that can even do some of these levels of math exactly. or read these type of graphs something like that and that just makes your pay scale go up and up as the fewer amount of people that can do these skills. It's a, it's a specialty. And you'll see that like no matter your major, the more specialized you become in yeah. something, the more they pay you. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great skill for you guys. Like While you're in high school, we talk about this every video, finding these little maybe niche classes at your high school and just sitting about them while they're free, while you don't have to pay money mm -hmm. to take them. You can just go see like, maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. You can probably drop it at the beginning of the semester even if you don't like it. So exactly. take advantage of your teachers, your resources in your high school, whatever that may be, mm -hmm. to where when you get to college, you have a base skill set that you can just grow and expand upon so you can get like just prepared for your career. Exactly. So Josh, I really appreciate you coming on Free Game today, sure, joining bro. us on set. For sure. You guys learned a little bit more about being a potential math major. Hopefully this is an option for you. Do your own research, guys. It's your future. You're going to figure out what you want, but you're going to have to put the work in yourself to truly figure out what you want to get out of college and what you want your potential career to be. So, appreciate you guys joining us today. It's been free game. It's free game. Yo!